box. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a word from the Lord. Jim's over here with you, and we are so glad you are tuned in. Hope you're ready for another study from God's Word. We're uh, gearing up. Let me just go ahead and plug this. We're gearing up for our tent meeting uh, set for September the 12th through the 23rd. It's going to be the Eden Fairgrounds this year, and we hope that you'll come out and uh, plan on visiting with us each night. Uh, we have uh, Bible preaching, teaching lined up, and we know that I hope that you know that you'll get only a word from the Lord when you hear us hear us preach. We have guys coming in from uh, South Carolina. We have guys coming in from uh, Kentucky. Guys coming in from uh, Tennessee, <clears throat> as well as some of the local guys are going to be preaching. So we hope that you'll come out and study God's word with us during the tenth, September twelfth through the twenty third. That's the week after Labor Day. So after you have your cookout and you grill your hamburgers, whatever, say you know what. This time next week, we're going to be at the 10th Eden Fairground. And uh, that's, hope that you'll put that on your calendar and plan on being with us uh, every night during the tent meeting. If you'd like to contact me or work from the Lord at gmail.com, 276 340 2653, so you can reach me. And we hope that you will uh, do that. Look forward to hearing from those of you who, who email us and uh, call us or even text us. Uh, we'd be glad to hear from you any way we can. Tonight, <clears throat> I want you to think about warnings that you've heard and how often, how often you take them seriously. You know, I remember uh, it was several years ago, there was a great uh, SARS scare over in China. And everybody was uh, putting on masks and they would uh, stop flights coming in and out of China and so forth. Um, then uh, that just kind of disappeared. You had the, uh, the bird flu, that kind of uh, came and went. HIV, that was uh, a big one. I guess it's still a problem. But it was a time when <clears throat> everybody was warned about how to uh, 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 live their lifestyle. You know, if, you have one, if you're living the alternate lifestyle, you know, be sure and use protection, even though that's not going to keep you from uh, contacting HIV and getting the HIV virus. Uh, now, uh, in the news is the Zika virus. You know, here's the uh, mosquitoes coming in and Zika virus. They're bringing Zika virus and everybody's worrying about the, uh, the hurricanes and the tropical depressions that are hitting the coast and how uh, once all the rain and the floods come in, then uh, mosquitoes reproduce in abundance and there's the Zika virus, how it comes in and, and uh, wipes out a lot of people, makes them sick. And, Ebola, you know, there was a time uh, just uh, about a year or so ago, you know, everybody's worried about Ebola uh, breaking out. It was uh, going pretty strong and heavy down there in uh, <clears throat> I can't, uh, Liberia, I think is where it was, and, uh, in Africa, and, and everybody's afraid it's going to come to the U.S., and, and everybody was watching to see what was going on, and then all of a sudden it just disappeared. You don't hear anything, anything about it. And it's almost as if the warnings that were designed for our protection, maybe they were just getting us to look somewhere else. I don't know. But the warnings are for our protection. Anytime you hear a warning, there's a siren goes off, there's a warning there. It's, it's, it's a telling you to get ready for something dangerous that's coming. But how many times, friends, think about this, how many times do you think about the warnings that God gives and yet you don't pay attention to them? Do you ever stop and think that, you know what, maybe you need to pay more attention to the warnings that are being given, the warning signs? Paying attention if things are going bad, do you really stop and think, you know what, this can be a, this can be a problem? You know, God sent his prophets to warn his people. And the Bible says, for example, in Jeremiah 7, 25, God through Jeremiah says, Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. So constantly God was sending prophets, sending prophets, sending people to, to turn back to God, turn back to God, turn back to God. I have sent all my servants, the prophets, rising up early. So it's not like God caught them at the last minute and said, Oh, by the way, you know, here comes, here comes the punishment. No, it was a constant reminder, a constant warning that you're going to be punished. 
God's going to punish you if you don't repent. But yet, the warnings, the warnings never seem to be heeded. Same way with warnings about false prophets. Notice this in Jeremiah 23 and verse 16. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you, they make you vain. Now, the question is, were the warnings heeded? Was the warning heeded about false prophets? Was the warning heeded about going into uh, captivity? Was the, was the, uh, were the uh, uh, warnings, were they listened to? Were they heeded? You know what? It's almost, to me, it's like, it's like people hear the warnings and they just let them go in one ear and out the other. And we know that they weren't heeded. When Jesus came on the scene, when Jesus came on the scene, notice what he says. He goes back and he looks back at all the times that the prophets warned Israel about the coming doom, about the coming punishment, and yet they didn't listen. In Jeremiah 20 through 34, he says, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. So God sent them, all different kinds of people, from different walks of life, to warn the people, and they killed some, they crucified some, they beat some, they, they mistreated them. And then Jesus says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen gather her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Friends, do you stop and think that what we are doing on this program is really a warning. And many of you who watch, and y'all watch weekly, and you watch uh, regularly, and you're, you're faithful viewers, and I appreciate that, but do you ever stop and think that this is actually a warning that you're getting, but yet you're not heeding it? Because like, the, like Israel of old, I want you to consider what they did. Because when you look at what people today are doing, and how people back then listen to warnings, and yet didn't heed them, it's almost as like the Yogi Berra said. It's like deja vu all over again. It's just like, it's like we've been here before, and we've been here before. We've seen this, we've heard this, and yet nothing's changed. It's like deja vu all over again. It's almost like when I'm reading the Bible, and I'm reading what people did in Jeremiah's day, and I'm reading what people did in Jesus' day, that it's the same thing as if no one has ever paid attention to what has been written for us. Now, consider, if you will, in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 10 and verse 6, listen to, what, listen to what Paul says. Paul says that these things, the things that were written in the Old Testament, the things that happened to the children of Israel, these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they lusted, neither be idolaters, as some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Do you stop and think that the things that we read in the Bible, the things that we hear preached in the Bible, they are warnings and yet they're not heeded, they're not listened to? And so it's like, I've heard this before. I've seen this before. I see how people act. I see how people treat God's Word and yet nothing's changed really nothing's changed really and so what we're talking about it seems like these things are happening again now I'm not a prophet I'm not a prophet nor the son of a prophet as Amos said but I will tell you this I'm going to give you a warning I'm going to give you a warning things that have happened or things that happened in the Bible in Bible times when people heard the message of God and yet refused to obey it Things that happened back then, the same kind of things are going to happen today to people who disobey God. The consequences of disobeying God 
in times past resulted in punishment. And the result of disobeying God today is going to result in punishment. Now, like I said, I'm not a prophet. I don't have to have some miraculous gift to tell you this. Notice what Peter said. Peter was an apostle. Here's what he said. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. He said, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who shall privately bring in damnable heresies. Now, it doesn't take a, 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 a brain scientist to figure this out, right? There were false prophets and there will be false teachers. Now, friends, if that doesn't register in your minds that you need to be watching for false teachers, I don't know what was. Maybe you're going to get to heaven on a baby ticket. But it seems to me that people seem to despise the warnings and don't really seem to care about what's happening to them. Now, listen, does this sound familiar? Let's read Isaiah 30, verses 9 and 10, and see if this sounds like a familiar ring. See if it has a familiar ring to it. Isaiah 30, verses 9 and 10. This is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. <clears throat> now can you imagine someone not wanting to hear the truth to the point that they actually say, just tell us lies. Just tell me, just tell me something that's wrong. Tell me something that's lies. As long as it sounds good, feels good, that's what I want to hear. They will not hear the law of the Lord, and they will only hear lies. They won't hear the law, but they will hear lies. Does that sound familiar? What about this? What about this? Isaiah 59, verse 4. None calleth for justice, none nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. None calleth for justice. None pleads for truth. No one wants to make a defense. No one wants to make an argument. No one wants to defend the truth. Now that's what Isaiah is saying. Does that sound familiar today? You know, when I hear, when I hear people talking today and I hear them uh, express their thoughts on studying the Bible or having a discussion about the Bible, Man, it's like deja vu all over again. No one wants to listen to the truth. I just, I was, I was kind of amazed when I was listening to that uh, video of, of uh, the lady that, that Caleb was talking to. Well, you know the answer. Well, I just started guessing. I would have started guessing. I told, told Caleb, I said, I would have just started guessing. Well, what was he doing? You said, I know. Let me just guess. You, you can, you know, raise your eyebrows or wink or something nod whenever I get close to it. You see? Now, is this really what we're talking about? No one really wants to know the truth? What about this? In Jeremiah 23, 16 and 17, does this sound familiar? They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They still, they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath sent me, the Lord hath said, <clears throat> ye shall have peace, and they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come unto you. Does that sound familiar? People saying, you know, just do what you want to do. Just do what you want to do. I have a video clip. I tried to find it, but Jackie Poe uh, from Mercy Crossing in, in Martinsville, you know, he said, you know, you just walk around, do whatever you want to do. Just walk, just do whatever you want to do. Does that sound familiar? Sounds familiar. It sounds to me like uh, Jeremiah's day. It sounds like we're living this all over again. It's, it's deja vu all over again. They speak a vision of their own heart. Things that they believe and things that they teach all come from their own heart. They all come from their own heart. Now, I'm going to play this video clip. I have some others. This is a Seventh-day Adventist uh, gentleman. And uh, he's, a, he's a preacher, Andre Saunders. Uh, see if we can get him to do a little talking for us. All right. 
knew this was going to happen. Of course, my thing come unplugged a while ago. Just a moment. Had the same problem last week, didn't I? So your so your church does not use Ellen G. White's writings as a source of authority. The only source of authority that the Adventist Church uses, the only source of authority, the only source of authority, the only source of authority that the Adventist Church uses that they that they elevate is the Holy Scripture. All right, the only source they use, the only source they use, the Seventh-day Adventist Church uses, is the Scripture. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you, friends, this, this is a man that's, that's prophesying lies and deceit. Their, their source of authority comes from the mind, from a vision of Ellen G. White, contrary to what he says. Their, their creed books and their catechism tell us that, you know what? They use Ellen G. White as a source of authority. Now, here is uh, another man. This is uh, Ron Rogers. And here's what he says about Ellen G. White. What's interesting is that she only had a third grade education. But you take uh, just two books that she wrote, like Desire of Ages and the little book Steps to Christ. Friends, she had to be inspired some way or another by God to write such beautiful uh, literary uh, uh, words describing the life of Christ and the, the gospel and how to come to Jesus. She had to be inspired some way or another by God. She had to be inspired some way or another by God. She had to be inspired. She had to be inspired. She had to be inspired. Now, here's Ron Rogers, another Seventh-day Adventist uh, preacher, that's saying she was inspired. She had to be inspired to write those things. Well, if she's inspired, wouldn't you use them as authority? Can you imagine someone taking an inspired writer and an inspired man uh, Mark or, or, or Luke, someone that, that wasn't an apostle but just was inspired. <clears throat> James, the, the brother of Jesus, someone that wasn't an apostle but was inspired. Can you imagine saying, well, this man was inspired, but we're not going to use his writings as authority. We're just going to use the Bible. Friends, if Ellen G. White's writings were inspired, if Ellen G. White was inspired to write, you know what? Her writings deserve to be in the Bible. If they, if they fit, if they harmonize with everything else. You know, if you, you put it to the test and let's see if it missed the qualifications of, of inspiration, let's see. If it was inspired, you should, you should use it. I just can't imagine someone going, well, it's inspired, but we don't use it. What do you use it for? A doorstop? I mean, why, why even have it then? You must not really believe it's inspired if you don't use it. But you know what, friends? They do use it. They do use it. Their creed book says, their writing sanctioned from the, uh, their headquarters in, in uh, Spring City, Maryland, says that Ellen G. White's writings are a continuing and authoritative source of truth. Now, this is stemming from the mind of a person, and thus when someone tells you, oh, we just used the Bible, you know what they're doing? They're prophesying deceits to you. They're telling you lies. They're trying to convince you of an untruth, of a lie. They're trying to get you to believe that all we use is the Bible, but in reality, they have some more inspired writings. Now, isn't that like Jeremiah's day? When someone, if someone were to say that in Jeremiah's day, someone would say, well, that's okay, we're going to go along with it. That's what they do today. That's what they do today. How do I know? Because there's still people in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. There are individuals who know about the Seventh-day Adventist Church and they stay in it. 
That's why we're telling you. See, we're giving you the warnings. We're saying, listen, these folks are lying to you. You need to come out and leave this man-made church that claims to use another source of inspired writings other than the Bible. Well, that's what they did in Jeremiah's day. It's, it's deja vu all over again. What about this? Jeremiah 5, 31. The, prophesy, the prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. Do you ever stop and think about how many people let their preachers and their pastors do what they want to do and not say anything about it? How many times on this program have we discussed the pastors <coughs> that make merchandise of, of the people? How many times have we talked about the fact that priests or these, these pastors, preachers, bishops, rabbis, whatever, take advantage of people and uh, 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 milk them for all their worth with their tithes and so forth? And yet the people will call in and defend the preacher. They'll defend the pastor like, like he was the most. They love to have it so. Does that sound familiar? See, things haven't really changed in Jeremiah, from Jeremiah's day to today. I mean, here you have individuals that will, uh, that will believe a lie about uh, that will believe a lie that the, that the preacher is telling them and then come to their defense. Let me show you this one. Uh, here is one. This is a little lengthy, but I think we can get to it. Here's an example of how the, the people defend and love to have it so What you need to do is come, come to the, uh, the revival meeting at uh, Piedmont Baptist Hall. You know what, week. sir? I, I have invited. You I, Phil Kidd does not scare anybody Father in Rockingham County. Sir, I have gone up and invited Phil Kidd to come to our tent when he's in town. I've ha invited him to come on this set, and he won't do it. He has boxing gloves on his on his website, but he won't step foot in our tent. If you come on to revival, sir, and good I, Lord may touch sir, you, you, you know get what? Saved. I'm sorry? If you come to your Bible, the good Lord may touch you, you might get saved. You know what? If I come to your tent, I'm, I'd be afraid for my life. You know why? Because you Baptists, all you do is threaten. No, we don't threaten. We, yes. we, we preach the word of God. You don't straight. threaten? You don't threaten? Are you sure you don't threaten? No, sir, I don't threaten. Well, let me, let me just play this for you then. Uh, do you remember a guy named Paul Baisden? Never heard of him. Well, he's a mem he was a member of Piedmont Baptist over there where you're defending and I want you to listen to what, what he says. Now, on occasion, Johnny was invited over to y'all's school. Right? Dwayne King teacher college or school? He's got coach. He's got coach every okay. Monday night. All right. He, was in, he and Jason Harrison went over. They were invited. And when they got over there, they were threatened. And this is what was stated after the fact. I just want you to listen to it. We got audio, Tyler. Uh, that's Paul Baisden. He is in the, the Baptist College. Would you verify uh, that those individuals talked about threatening us the other night? Hey, you deserved it. Oh, did you hear that? I really appreciate that, folks. Uh, that's Paul Baisden. He is in the, the Baptist College over there, Piedmont Baptist College, and he actually said we deserve to be threatened. Would you verify uh, that those individuals talked about threatening us the other night? And you deserved it. And you deserved it. And you deserved it. And he is in the, the Baptist College over there, Piedmont Baptist College, and he actually said, We deserve to be threatened. And you deserved it. And you deserved it. And he is in the, the Baptist College over there, Piedmont Baptist College, and he actually said, We deserve to be threatened. And you deserved it. And you deserved it. And he is in the, the Baptist College over there, 
Piedmont Baptist College, and he actually said we deserve to be. Uh, hearsay. You wouldn't know either. He was there. That's hearsay. Pa Paul Basin was there. I go out tomorrow and say that you said something that don't mean you said it. Sir. The brother King of our, they preach it straight. Sir, there was a 60, I believe 64-year-old man who said he could whoop Jason and Johnny both. And here's a man who's verifying that it was said and that it was deserved. Now that's the kind of that's the kind of demeanor that Baptists put up when they can't give a, a defense, and I'm just saying, you know what? If you want to have a, 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 a let the community have an unbiased opinion of who's telling the truth, why not come onto a forum where there's no no one around like on this set and let the whole community judge? But you know what? what did, uh, Phil Kidd and Dwayne King won't do it. I'm sorry. What did John the Baptist? He he come out preaching. What about John the Baptist? He holding back. He called them vipers and snakes. He that's right, everybody. and that's exactly what I'm saying about about you folks in, in the Piedmont Baptist Church. He come out preaching hard and straight the way these people. Well, sir, preach. you know what? Dwayne King doesn't preach anything like John the Baptist. And uh, he, he are you saying too. are you saying Dwayne King preaches like John the Baptist? I'm saying he preaches the Bible. Are, are, are you saying he preaches like John the Baptist? I'm saying he preaches the straight. No, he doesn't. I just I've just showed sir, I just showed you that Dwayne King said Peter didn't have children. And then I showed from the Bible that an elder, Peter said he was an elder, that Peter, uh, in order to have be an elder, Peter had to have children. The woman went through it with me. We verified it from the scripture, and Dwayne King said he couldn't find it. Now, you can say Dwayne King preaches the scriptures, you know, all you want to, but that right there shows that he does not reason from the Bible. He doesn't study the Bible. He doesn't preach the Bible. I wouldn't sit there and listen to him tell me something within the Bible without uh, uh, scrutinizing and examining every single word he said. Uh, well, I listen to him, and uh, yep. and I read the Bible. I, 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 I haven't read exactly where Peter said I got kids. But well, he, I, know I just showed you. I know he's married because he says he's got a mother. That's on. right. That's and right. That proves he's married, but he don't act like say that he's got kids. It does right here, sir. Look. He don't say, it, well, it, it says right here. Names. It says right here he must have children. He has children. A bishop has children. A bishop and the elder, same thing. And he must have children. And Peter said, I have I, I am an elder, therefore he had to have children. Now, that's what I'm saying. A first-year a first uh, Bible student can discern that. So, you know, why is it that Dwayne King missed it? I'll tell you why. Because he doesn't know the Bible. Now, friends, that's, that was kind of a lengthy example. But you see, this is my point. The prophets prophesy falsely. We showed this man, Dwayne King, and uh, the, the individuals over there at Piedmont Baptist Church, threatened, right? Uh, uh, were uh, threatened to use violence. And then I showed where he couldn't even discern that Peter had children. If Peter was an elder, and the Bible says that an elder had to have children, therefore Peter had children. And Dwayne King couldn't even figure that out. And here's a man that says, well, he preaches right from the Bible, but the Baptist church is not in the Bible, yet the man was defending him. Why? My people love to have it. They love to have it so. It doesn't really matter what the priests do. It doesn't really matter what the preacher says. It doesn't really matter what the pastor does because the people are going to let them do it. Now, does that sound familiar? See, it's like deja vu all over again. Are we reading about Jeremiah or are we reading about Rockingham County? In, uh, in, the, in the year 2000. What are we talking about here? We're talking about the same reaction that people have to the truth and the same love they have for error. It's like deja vu all over again. <clears throat> what about this? Jeremiah 23, 16 and 17. Let's read this again. Speak, they speak a vision <clears throat> out of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They still say unto, me, unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. Is, it, is this deja vu all over again? Jeremiah said that what they say doesn't come from the mouth of the Lord. It comes out of their own heart. People today are not really concerned about what comes out of God's mouth. They're concerned about what comes out of man's heart. But listen to this. Here's what comes out of God's mouth. 2 Timothy chapter th uh, <coughs> 3 and verse 16. 
All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. You know what that word inspiration means? It means God breathed. God breathed. I used to teach the little kids, here's how you know the meaning of inspiration. It came from the mouth of God. It came from the mouth of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration. All Scripture is God breathed. It came from God's mouth. God told what was going to be written down, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Now, when people love to have it so, when people love to have it their own way, they'll settle for things that, that aren't even from the mouth of God. Rather, they'd rather have something from the mind of man. Now, friends, I don't know about you, but I think given the choice, I think it'd be a, a no-brainer to take what came out of the mouth of the Lord. Now, friends, this is what we're trying to tell you. We're trying to give you a warning to show you that <clears throat> the things you've been hearing, they didn't come from the Bible. That's why we're, we're trying to constantly trying to remind you, challenge you, encourage you, motivate you to open up this book and see if what is being said is really from the Bible. Instead of just saying, well, <clears throat> I saw the preacher. He walked into the pulpit and he put his Bible on the pew, on the, up on the pulpit. Therefore, he's preaching right from the Bible. Friends, just because you've got a Bible open doesn't mean that what you're saying is from the Bible. It doesn't mean that it's, it's in accordance with the Scripture. Now, you say, well, James, you got your Bible open. How do we know? Well, I've got it right here on the screen, and I'll give, you, I'll give you a Bible answer for any question you ask me. We're the, we're the ones, friends, that open up the phone lines. We're the ones that say, hey, call in and, and, and scrutinize us. Call in and ask a question. Call in, let's have a Bible study. Call in, let's reason together. We're the ones that are saying, no, let's, let's don't settle for what comes out of someone's heart. Let's settle for what comes out of someone's mind, the Lord's mind, a mouth. Let's see what comes out of God's mouth. You see, that, that's, that's why we're just giving you warnings, but it just seems like the individuals that we deal with on a regular basis, more and more, the people are just like these people. They just love to have it so. They just don't want to do anything except what comes out of the mind of of their own prophets. In Jeremiah 5, 31, the prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule by their means. Again, how many times have we warned people about these preachers that are living in excess? You know, I mean, how many times have we talked about these chief apostles and, and pastors that take up all the tithes and the love offerings and insist and demand and demand that you give, 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 give. And yet there's some of you out there that, that are saying, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. Why? Do you not hear the warning? Do you not hear the warning that these people are taking advantage of you? Do you not hear the warnings that they're making merchandise of you? Now, some individuals, some individuals say, you know what, I I'm tired of this. I'm tired of being begging, uh, uh, people begging money from me all the time. Times are hard. Economy's bad. And I don't have all this extra money. So I'm not going to tithe. I'm not going to give all these things. And you, you've quit going to some of these big churches that are just always asking for money. You've got the ATM in the, in the foyer. So you don't have any reason not to give. You're tired of that. Well, that's good. I'm glad you left that. But what about... What about listening to the people that have been warning you about it? If we've warned you about all these things and you said, you know what, that, that's smart. I'm, I'm going to leave these churches. Well, why don't you join us? Why don't you join us? Why don't you become a member of the Lord's church and help us warn others? But see, the warning is constant. These people are making merchandise of you, but it's like deja vu all over again. No one is listening and heeding the warnings. You're on the word from the Lord. Hello? You're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, I'm calling for uh, a word from the Lord. You're on the air. Oh, okay. I, I'm watching. It must be a different time on here right now. Anyway, uh, 
I was watching the thing where you're talking about people uh, preaching from their visions and their heart rather than from God's Word. Okay. And uh, that just rang a bell in my mind because we've got all these people preaching about the rapture all the time. And uh, I know very well where Jesus talks about the wheat and the tares. It's just the opposite of the rapture. He describes the whole thing there, so... I'd like to hear how you explain that to me. Uh, the wheat, the the wheat and the tares. Okay. Well, I I may I may say that for another time, but the the bottom line is just talking about the rapture. Let's just take that. <clears throat> the the rapture is not mentioned in the Bible. Now there is a carrying away or being caught up uh, mentioned in First Thessalonians four and verse seventeen, but that is not that's not called the rapture. And in this occasion, in this occasion, notice this, Paul said that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, the rapture says that people are caught up, that are, that are caught up and there are some remaining. But Paul says that the, that the dead in Christ shall rise first, verse 16. The Lord himself shall descend with the, uh, heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, if there's anybody coming back down according to the rapture, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says we're, all, we're going to be ever with the Lord in the air. So there's no way that only a certain group of people are going to be caught up and and the rest are left down here. Here's a, here's a problem with that, friends. If you believe that people are going to be called up, all the righteous are going to be called up, and the unrighteous are going to be left, <clears throat> who's going to teach the unrighteous? Who's going to teach the unrighteous? All the righteous are gone. All the godly people are gone. Who's going to teach them? Who's going to teach the ungodly? They're just going to figure it out on themselves? Hey, somebody disappeared. I better go read the Bible. No, friends. That's far in the script. The rapture, uh, premillennialism, that, that doctrine of the rapture, that's, it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. And like the caller said, that came from some man's imagination. And so here's, here's, what we're, here's what we're getting to. When we reason out of the scriptures, we can determine what is from the mind of man and what's from the mouth of God. All right? And so the people, the people love to have it so instead of going to the Bible. You're on a word from the Lord. Hey, I just called you. I just wanted to call back and tell you I really appreciate that. We're in, we're, me and you are in the same Honda. In other words, we're in <laughs> we're one, one accord. accord. All right. Where are you calling from? Where are you calling from? I'm calling, I'm calling from Greensboro. Okay. Are you watching on, online? I'm watching on uh, Channel 47. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I, I really thought, appreciate th that because like, that just bugs the heck out of me about this rapture deal, and I know I'm, I'm in agreement with everything you just said. Okay. Well, are, are we? Um, so, are you saying that we were we're not in agreement on some other things? No, I was just saying. Okay. I'm, well, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I'd like to. I'd like to get together and study the Bible with you sometime. I'm. I'm not far from Greensboro. I'll come down to see you sometime. Okay. Uh, can, can I? How you want to set that up? Can I put you on hold and get a name and number? What? Can I put you on hold and you give a name and number? Okay. All right. I'm gonna put you on hold and someone's gonna take your name and phone number. Okay. So All right. All right. All right. Stay on the line. All right. That's line two, if you don't mind. All right. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. Now, friends. So when we're talking about these false prophets are these, these preachers, pastors, bishops, rabbis, whoever they are, that people love, <clears throat> all they're doing is they're, they're fleecing, they're fleecing their, their flocks, if you will. Let's move on here. Let's look at another thing, another deja vu here. What about this? What about Isaiah 59 and verse 4? None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. Now, we read this verse earlier, but here's why it's the deja vu. Isaiah said in his day, there was no one that wanted to judge. 
No one wanted to pronounce sentence for or against or to litigate. Man, if that's not where we live today, Isaiah must be walking around somewhere because this is what, this is right on our alley. This is where we're living. No one wants to judge. No one wants to pronounce a sentence about good or evil. No one wants to say that's right, that's wrong. We live in a society that you can't say anything is wrong except saying something's wrong. The only thing that's wrong in this life is individuals who want to say, you can't do that. But if you say anything goes, that means anything goes except telling someone they're wrong. No one wants to plead for justice. No one wants to plead for truth. Now, friends, if that's not where we live, I don't, I don't know what is. It's like deja vu all over again. We get calls all the time. Individuals write us letters, whatever. Y'all shouldn't be judging. Y'all shouldn't be talking about people. They're doing the very same thing. But when it comes to social issues, moral issues, doctrinal issues, no one, no one speaks up. No one wants to say that preacher's wrong. No one wants to say, yeah, uh, you know, the, the preacher running off with the flute player. Yeah, that, that's wrong. No one says that. No one wants to condemn no one wants to condemn. They just say, oh, don't argue the scriptures. Don't, don't, don't argue the scriptures. Don't argue the scriptures. Listen to a, an example of this. No one wants to plead for the truth. Yes, uh, where you get that stuff from? You talking about the, uh, people are doing anything but jib jabbing. Who made you the judge of these kind of things? You, you are the one that's doing the jib jabbing. You're calling God a lie. You don't know what you're talking about, man. You ought, you, you ought to quit this stuff. You, you, you're criticizing everybody that you can think of, the apostolic, the Pentecostals, and uh, you, you, you're way out of line. You're are way you, out of line. Are you defending them? Well, if you just preach the Word of God and leave these people alone. Mm -hmm. you, you're meddling in people's uh, uh, salvation. That's why, listen to me, that's why I never, 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 never answer my email. I'm not going to do it. Y'all can tell me to all day. I won't do it. So let, let's take this yeah. call. Okay, let's take it. Good evening. You don't expect a miracle. Uh, yes, uh, I have a question for Jackie. Okay. Jackie, do you <laughs> believe that a Christian can lose his salvation? Well, I tell you what, I'm not really going to even, even go to that issue. Mm -hmm. I just believe that if you want to live for God, you can live for God. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to live for God, you, you know, you can go a different direction. That just, that's what the bottom line is. Amen. Thank you for calling. That didn't answer my question, though. Well, that, that's, that's the answer right there. I'm not going to get into any that contention. Wait, Amen. I'm Thank you for calling. I'm just not going to get into No, we're not, going to, get in, we're not going to get into that tonight. No. This is, this is a... This is a Bible program. We're not, we don't get into answer Bible questions. No, let's don't do that. Let's don't do that. Well, why? Why won't they answer? No one wants to judge. No one wants to plead the cause. No one wants to say, well, here's what the Bible says about that. Now, the man that called in, the man that called in, he would believe that you, that you can't lose your salvation, that you can't fall from grace, that you can't so sin as to be lost. Now, I'm pretty sure Jackie Poe believes you can but Jackie Poe's not going to answer that. He's not going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, well, here's what the Bible teaches. Yeah, you can be lost. You can fall from grace. He's not, he's not going to answer that. Why? Why didn't you have to man out? Why didn't you have to man out? See what it is? No one wants to plead the cause. No one wants to give a defense. But you know what? Paul did. In the New Testament, man, they were always willing, ready and willing to give an answer. Look at this. In Acts 17... Acts 17, verse 2, the Bible says, And Paul, as his manner was, went unto them, and three Sabbaths they reasoned with them out of the Scripture, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen for, again from the dead, that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Now, Paul didn't have a problem with opening and alleging and reasoning out of the Scripture. He didn't go have a problem with disputing he didn't have a problem with disputing. Look at this, Acts 17. Let's come down to verse uh, <clears throat> uh, 17. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. 
You know, it just dawned on me that maybe there's a reason why people don't like to dispute the Scriptures. Look at this. Paul disputed with devout persons. So, could it be, I'm just, just kicking this out there, just spitballing here to see if something sticks here, could it be that the reason why people don't want to dispute the Scripture and, and study the Bible together is because they're not devout? Uh-oh. Yep. Could be, friends. Maybe, maybe you need to check your quote-unquote Christianity. If you don't like to reason, if you don't like to hash out the Scriptures, if you don't want to dispute, maybe you're not one of the devout persons. Maybe you're not one of these persons that, that, are, that are truly devout and religious. Maybe you're not, maybe you're not uh, as uh, strong of a Christian as you claim to be. I don't know. I'm just asking. Maybe you need to consider it. But in the New Testament, they didn't have a problem disputing. They didn't have a problem pleading for truth and justice, giving a cause, giving an answer. As I, Isaiah said, no one wants to plead for the truth. No one, wants to, no one wants to plead. No one wants to argue. No one wants to make a defense. No one wants to defend the truth. It's like deja vu all over again. But you know what? This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. We're going to be ready and willing to give an offense. In Acts chapter 18, Acts chapter 18 and verse 24, notice this. You have a, a man named Apollos. You have a man named Apollos. He was mighty in the Scriptures. And he was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in the Spirit, spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. He wasn't even correct in some of the things he believed, yet he was out here saying it. All these folks out here that won't debate and won't, that won't uh, uh, have a discussion, the preachers that won't talk, now, they seem to believe what they, what they say, but they won't say it. Here's a man who wasn't even right. Now, if these folks believe they're right, why don't they say it? Here's a man that wasn't right, but he believed it was right so much that he was saying it. Is that why you won't talk? Because you're afraid you're going to be found out that you're wrong? But Apollos, notice this. Apollos began to speak, and two folks heard him, Aquila and Priscilla. When they heard him, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass through Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come helped them much, for he mightily convinced the Jews that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Didn't have a problem with it. Didn't have a problem with it. Now, friends, I don't know about you, but when I read Isaiah, no one wants to plead. No one's concerned about justice. No one's concerned about giving an answer. It's like deja vu all over again. But the reasons for what's hap what happened in Jeremiah's day and Isaiah's day are the same reasons that they're happening today. The reason it's happening again is because the people are the same kind of people. Stiff-necked. People are stiff-necked and don't heed warnings. That's what kind of people don't heed warnings. In Exodus... 32, in verse 9, <clears throat> The Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now that's what God said about Israel. You know, those chosen people. You know, the people that everybody's, oh, we've got to save Israel, we've got to protect Israel. They were stiff-necked. They were rebellious. They were hard-hearted. They were obstinate. Look at this, Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. In verse 4, obstinate people, because I knew that thou art obstinate, and thy neck is in iron sinew, and thy brow brass. Boy, you obstinate. Hard-headed. Hard-headed. God told Ezekiel, God told Ezekiel, I'm going to have to make your head like flint. Because these are a hard-headed, stiff-necked, rebellious people. You know why? Because they wouldn't do what God says. They wouldn't listen to Him. They wouldn't even heed His warnings. In Judges chapter 2, Judges 2 and verse 19, listen to what the Bible says. 
It came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. People really haven't changed, have they? It's like deja vu all over again. Same kind of people reacting the same way to God's Word because they're stiff-necked, obstinate, stubborn. They really don't want to listen to what God has to say. They really don't want to listen to what God has to say. And friends, here's my concern. Here's my concern. I don't want you to experience deja vu. I don't want you to to say, you know what, look at the Bible and say, I I'm just like these people. When you read the Bible, you'll see yourself. I don't want you to see a stubborn, rebellious person. I want you to see a person that, well, I was stubborn, rebellious, but now I'm going to submit to the Lord. See, the people who rebelled against God, who were stubborn and stiff-necked and obstinate, they just would not hear. They just did not want to hear the truth, even though they knew it was the truth. In Acts 13, verse 46, Acts 13, verse 46, the Bible says, Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken unto you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Is that really what you're doing? You're saying that you're not worth salvation? You're not worth doing what God says? You're judging yourself unworthy by refusing it, putting it from you, pushing it away? Jesus said, you're dull of hearing. Friends, we're warning you. You need to clean out your ears. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah which said, in hearing they shall hear and shall not understand and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. Their ear, the eyes of the closed, and any time, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. You know, friend, here's the warning. Here's the warning. Don't be stiff-necked. Don't be hard-hearted. Don't be dull of hearing. You know, if you went to the doctor, I see this commercial on TV, hearing aids. And one of them says, it may just be that you have earwax built up. Hey, start there. Start with the simple things. Don't be, don't be obstinate. Don't be hard-hearted. Things really haven't changed overall with people. But it doesn't mean that you have to be one of them. It doesn't mean that you have to be one of those rebellious, stiff-necked, and uncircumcised of heart and ears that always resist what the Holy Spirit has to say through His Word. You know, it's like deja vu all over again. People are going to hear this word. They're going to hear the message. And they're going to say, not today. I'm going to stay where I am. I'm going to stay in my man-made church. Worship God in my man-made church. And when I die, I'm going to be lost. Why? Because you didn't obey God. Friends, we want to give you the warnings. We want to help you out. As we close out, I want to remind you of our tent meeting. September 12th uh, through the 23rd at the Eden Fairgrounds. 7 o'clock each night, no, que uh, no collections, questions are welcome. Come on out and study with us. We we'll hope to see you there. Until next time, make sure you're getting a word from the Lord.